what's going on welcome to my channel so today i want to talk a little bit more about sweet picking and i get asked about a lot um i just want to go into a little bit more of uh some a few more theory ideas um so instead of you know instead of just looking at it from a technique standpoint um, there are a few things you're going to want to get down theory wise as well and one of uh, those things is inversions okay now essentially an inversion all it is for those of you that don't know is you're just jumbling around the notes of a chord or an arpeggio um, so they contain the same notes it has the same the harmony has the same tonality to it um, but you are just jumbling around the notes um, so that they are in a different order. We're going to talk about D minor arpeggios right now because whenever I see people starting to sweep, uh, players starting to sweep, they always kind of start with that same three string D minor shape which I'm going to go over in a minute. Nothing wrong with that. Great shape. Um, but let's just look at the, the key of D minor. So if we take a D minor triad, um, root, flat, third, and fifth, we have a D, an F, and an A. Okay, so we've got D minor triad, we've got D, F, and an A. So this is a shape that I kind of see a lot of players starting with. You know, I see that a lot. Uh, again, nothing wrong with that, but um, even if we look right here, we have the notes D, F, A. Now on the G string, we're starting that from an A note here. So it's kind of like A, D, F, A. Anyway, so that's going to be an inversion. Okay, so now if we just take, just pretend these three picks are different notes within the triad. Again, a triad is just a chord or an arpeggio with three notes within it, okay? So for D minor, we have, so blue's going to be D. So that's the first. Pink is going to be F which is the flat three or minor third and the fifth is going to be white which is a okay so now if you have d in the bass it's just a d minor arpeggio we're all just d minor arpeggio nothing nothing new to it now if we take the pink so the flat three and put pink in the bass and by bass i mean the, the lowest note within the the triad now this becomes d minor over f now you may have seen slash chords before like D slash F, uh, C slash G, whatever it is, um, that's just what it means. So on the left you have the chord type. So in this, in this, uh, for this example, it's D minor, and you have the slash, and then on the right you have your bass note. So because F is actually a note within the D minor triad, it's not really going to change the tonality, the sound of the arpeggio or the chord, but it is now in the bass. So we would technically call it D minor over F. Okay, now because this is the first other option you have other than D of being in your bass, so we call this the first inversion. So this would be D minor over F, first inversion. Okay, now let's scramble these back. I've forgotten what colors were which now. <laughs> All right, but uh, blue is, let's just say blue is D, pink is F, which is the third, the flat three, and the white is the fifth, which is going to be A. Now what happens if we put the A in the bass, right? So now we flip this out. Now A is in the bass. We still just have D, F, and A to make up our D minor arpeggio. But A is in the bass, so we call this D minor over A. And it's going to be the second inversion because it's the second possible option we can have of being in the bass. So again, so normal D's in the bass. D minor, F in the bass, which is the flat three, D minor over F, first inversion, A in the bass, D minor over A, second inversion, fifth in the bass. Okay, now again, they're the same notes, they contain the same notes, you're just jumbling around, so it's going to have the same tonality. Now when you get into more extended chords, more extended arpeggios, you can throw all kinds of different things in the bass. You can create some really crazy weird chords and arpeggios, but we were talking from triads right now, so we're talking very very simply. Um, anyway, so you, you, wanna, you wanna apply this theory when you 
start your sweet picking journey, right? So let's go back to this shape that everyone's been getting down, right? For I'm just gonna I'm I'm just show you the the shape here, 14, 15, 13 on the three high strings. Hammering up to that 17. Okay, now let's look at this. So that one I said is the second inversion because A is in the bass, which is the, the five. Okay, now let's map out the fretboard. Let's just look at the three high strings for now. We're gonna pinpoint all of our D notes. So you always wanna pinpoint your root. You always wanna know where your root's at, okay? So my, I've got a D right here. And again, we can just play exactly the same shape an octave down. I'm gonna look for an F and an A. There's an A in the bass right here, but I've built it around this being my root. And I've because I know my note names, I can find my other Fs and my A's around it. So I've got this shape here, two, three, one, five, which is identical to this one. Okay, so there's my first sweet pick shape. Now guys, when I sweet pick, I do double pick. I like to get that video game kind of vibe. So when I get to the D, the, the G string, I go, um, right here I'm picking down, pull, up, up. And now I'm on the G string, I pick that G string again. So when it's up to speed, you get that. Now I do do the same thing on the high string. And uh, it just gives you like a fluttery effect, like a fluttery video game effect that I love to do when I sweep. So what you're gonna wanna do is out loud be like D minor, over A, second inversion. Fifth is in the bass. Say these out loud, it's gonna help your brain remember them. Now let's, let's move on. So there was a D. The next possible D I can find, I've got one right here. Seventh fret um, uh, G string, right? So I'm gonna go D. So now my root's on the, uh, the G string and I'm in, in, in the bass. And I'm gonna go D. There's an F right here on the sixth fret. A, the same A we played before on shape one. Uh, a on the high string, I'm gonna hammer to 10, which is my root. So I got a D right there. I've gone root to root. One. That's my one. There's my flat three, which is my F. My five. So we're gonna call this shape two. So just recap shape one. D minor over A, second inversion. Now this one, just because it's D minor arpeggio because the, the D is in the bass. Notice how they sound just the same. They're just jumbled up. Now then we move on and like I, I got another D right here. So now my D's on the high string. My root's on the high string. Um, let's find our shape around here. So I can go, I'm looking for, again, I'm, I'm trying to pinpoint F's and A's. There's an A right here and an F right here. So I can bar 10, 10, 10. I'm going uh, F, A, D. I can hammer onto this F on the 13th fret. D minor over F, and that's gonna be our first inversion because our F is our minor third. So yeah, D minor slash F, D minor over F. And then, so those are my three shapes, and then guess what? We can move on to shape one again. So we've got shape one. Play the octave of that up here. Shape one, shape two, shape three, shape one, shape two, shape three, shape one again, shape two. I don't have room for shape three, but if I did, I would totally play it. So you, you can see how now, instead of just being stuck in one area, you can tread all over the neck just by using some 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 knowledge, some some knowledge of your note names, and now knowledge of inversions. Now, everyone, um, if you do not know your note names on the fretboard, I have a cool lesson on it. Um, I will link that. I will put like a tab up here or something in editing. Um, but go and check that out. Type in my name and note name lesson, and you'll be able to learn all about that. All right, so let's just take this concept and now what we want to do is isolate three strings at a time. So we just isolate the high E string to the G string. So now let's isolate the B string to the D string. Okay, and find the same arpeggios there. So here's a D here on the uh, third fret, B string. I have, um, I have an A right here, second fret, G string. Now I have an F right here on the uh, third fret D string, okay? Now I can hammer from uh, this F right here. 
which is this six fret B string. Now this isn't a very sweep friendly shape. Um, I'm not a fan of this one. Ugh. See? Because that little nasty slide there, but I guess you could play it like pinky, middle, fast, middle. Um, it would probably be easier up the octave. Okay, but, but even if you don't like playing the shape, even if it's not very sweet friendly, know where they are, just get to know them. Just practice them, it doesn't matter. Right there we have in our bass, F, so we can call that this D minor over F, which is our fast inversion because the flat three is in the bass. Now, let's move on from that, I'll just do one more real quick. Sorry. Um, we can go here and we can go um, so again, I'm going to look for a D. There's a D right here. Now I have an A right here. And I have a F right here. Now I can play my um, A right here, which is my 5. I can go da, 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 da. on the D string. I've got the A in the bass. So I can call this D minor over A, second inversion, because my fifth is in the bass. Let's move on. I got a D right here in the bass. I have an F right here. I have an A right here. Hammer onto my D. There is a more of a theory, theoretical approach using inversions to um, find your way around your neck in uh, the context of three string sweeps. So go and get those down like crazy, bring them into your improvisation. So you, like I say in all of my videos and how I tell all my students, I'm all about getting better at several different things at once. So you, looking at sweet picking from this more theoretical viewpoint of inversions, you can, no, you're not just getting good at sweet picking, but you're getting good at slash chords, um, your slash chord theory. You're getting really good at triads, finding your triads across the neck, which in turn is going to help your soloing. It's going to help you find your arpeggios a lot quicker, i.e. chords quicker, because chords are just arpeggios, the same thing. Um, arpeggios are just chords with the notes played separately. Um, really good workout, really good for mapping out the fretboard, and um, it's a great way to stay in shape. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Um, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up button, please subscribe, and definitely leave me a comment, let me know any other videos you want me to make, um, and anything that you might need help with. You can uh, message me for lessons at jackielessons at gmail.com, and I'll do my best to help you out on there too. If you want to go to jackievincentofficial.com and subscribe to my mailing list too, um, I'll send you new content as it comes out, so you can keep up to date with lessons, and um, new music videos, and um, backing tracks, stuff like that so you can keep up to date with that stuff. Much love everyone, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Hope you have a happy new year if you're watching this soon. This probably won't come out until after new year, will it? Rock on, I hope this helps you.